Hello, this video is on adding and subtracting rational expressions. Um, you should fill out your note sheet as you watch this. So the rules for adding and subtracting rational expressions are the same as for fractions. You need to have a common denominator. So one example that's in black that I gave you first says 1 fourth plus 2 fourths equals 3 fourths. Basic. Um, but you guys can see the common denominator is 4, so if you remember rules from adding fractions, when the denominator is the same, really we're just putting the top numbers, we're just adding those together. So that's how we got the 3 on top. If we don't have a common denominator, then we want to find one. So in this case, if I'm looking at, you know, I have a 2 and an 8, we want the least common denominator. So what's the smallest number they can both go into? Well, that would be 8. So I would times this one on the left by 4, the top and the bottom. So I would end up with 4 eighths plus 3 eighths. Now I can just add the tops together to give me 7 eighths. So it's going to be similar when we add our rational expressions. We're just dealing with different types of expressions instead of numbers. So let's start with some more basic ones where denominators are already the same. So in the first example, we have 3b over b squared plus 5b over b squared. So I'm going to leave them as is right now because if you see, they are both um, have a denominator of b squared. So I can just go ahead and put the top pieces together. So I end up with 3b plus 5b. So I'm showing kind of a middle step here. I'm just adding them up top all over just a b squared there. Now if I simplify the top, because I'm going to combine like terms, I would get 8b over b squared. And now I can simplify my rational expression. So I can take this b up here, cancel it with a b there, and I end up with my final answer is 8 over b. Okay, for my next one, same thing. My denominator is the same. It's x minus 4. So all I'm going to do is take everything that's up top and add it together. So I like to show my middle step of just doing that to remind myself what's going on. Um, if you can skip this step and that works for you, that's fine. So I add minus 8x and then plus 2x plus 8. And now that's all over x minus 4. I'm going to combine some like terms. So x squared and become minus 6x and then plus 8 all over x minus 4. Now from here, I've taken care of the adding and subtracting piece. I still need to ask myself if I can simplify. So since I have a trinomial up top, I don't have room on my screen to show this, but what I would do, and if you want to pause the video, you want to factor that x squared minus 6x plus 8. We want to break it into its two binomials to see if we can get something else to cancel. So I did that on a scratch paper, and when I did, what it turned into was x minus 4 and x plus 2. So all I changed at the top, I just factored it using diamond and box, and the bottom stays x minus 4. But now what's nice, or what's cool that we can see, is this: the top x minus 4 and the bottom x minus 4 will cancel. So then my final answer is simply going to be, oops, that should be a minus 2. I was confused for a second. Right there, that should be a minus. So then our final answer is x minus 2. So it simplifies even more. Sometimes when we factor that trinomial, it doesn't cancel out, and that's okay. But we always want to factor when possible to see if we can get something to cancel out and to simplify even further. All right, one more. Only difference here is we are subtracting, which sometimes kids are like, okay, big deal. It's still a common denominator. Um, I pointed out, so this subtraction, remember, in the middle there has to distribute to everything on top there. So I like to rewrite it. So I'd have 3m minus 6 minus. So I'm subtracting that whole second top part of that fraction there, the negative m plus 2, that whole thing's being subtracted, really, all over m squared plus m minus 6. So when I do that, I actually end up with 3m minus 6 
plus m minus 2 over m squared plus m minus 6. Now I can combine like terms. So up top I have 3m and 3m and m gives me 4m and that was a minus 6 and a minus 2 so that's minus 8 all over m squared plus m minus 6. Again from here we've taken care of the adding and subtracting we've combined like terms now our job is to simplify. So this is kind of like putting a puzzle together. I have to piece everything out. If you want to pause the video, your job now is factor the top. So it's only two terms, so we're looking for just a GCF or dots. And then factor the bottom, which is a trinomial, so you should use diamond and box. When I did that, what I ended up with was I took a 4 out of the top. I took out that as a GCF, so then it became m minus 2. I used diamond and box on the bottom. And that gave me m plus 3 and m minus 2. So when we factor it, it does turn out that this m minus 2 cancels with this m minus 2. All that's left is that 4 up top and the m plus 3. So my final answer would be 4 divided by m plus 3. All right, now let's talk about something a little bit different. Um, Denominators aren't always the same. That would be nice if they were, but they aren't. Um, so if we have a problem here like 3x over 6x squared plus 2x over 4x, we want to find the least common denominator. Um, least common denominator, you're kind of think, thinking like what's the easiest thing, what's the simplest thing or the smallest thing to put my two denominators into. So right now I'm looking at I have a 6x squared in that fraction on the left, and then I have a 4x. So what I'm trying to figure out is what can I put them both into to get myself a common denominator. So I like to start with just the numbers 6 and 4. The smallest thing that 6 and 4 go into would be 12. Okay, so I'm going to go to 12. And then I have an x squared on the left with the 6x squared and just an x with the 4x. So I can't have just 12x as my common denominator because that 6 has an x squared with it. But I can do an x squared here. And let's look at why that works. So 12x squared is what I want to turn both denominators into. So what I can do is this 6x squared, I'm going to multiply it by 2, that's how I'd get there. The 4x I'd have to multiply 3 and then one other x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take what I just figured out and apply it to each fraction. So the 6x squared I had to multiply by 2. So I would do that there. Do it on the top also because what I do to the bottom I have to do the top, vice versa. <clears throat> My fraction on the right, to get to 12x squared I said I had to multiply 4x by 3x. I have to do that on the top too. So now what I really have is 6x over 12x squared plus 6x excuse me 6x squared over 12x squared so the bottoms are the same now I'm good to go so I'm gonna end up with 6x plus 6x squared I'm just putting the tops together over 12x squared bottom didn't change we already found the common denominator now I need to try to factor out the top uh, it's two terms, so I'm just looking for a GCF and then maybe dots. So biggest thing I can take out is a 6x. If I take a 6x out, remember that's like saying I have to divide each of these by 6x. So then I'm left with 1 plus x, just over 12x squared. And then from here, simplify one more time. So 6 and 12, well I can divide 6 and 12 both by 6. And then this x will cancel with 1x here. So doing this 6 divided by 6 will give me 1, so I don't have to write that. The top x canceled, so I had 1 plus x left on top. 12 divided by 6, because I divided each number by 6, gives me 2. And then I still had 1x left in the bottom there. So 1 plus x over 2x is my final answer. Okay. We have a subtraction problem and we have two different denominators. When I look at these, let's just look at the one on the left. So I have an m 
minus 3 that I'm dealing with, and then I have a 3 minus m. So right away, some of you are probably like, those are pretty similar, just opposite. So when you have a denominator like this where you have the same numbers and variables, so each one has a 3, each one has an m, you can always try multiplying one of them by a negative 1 to see if you can make them match up. Sometimes that's our easiest strategy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to multiply the 1 on the right by negative 1. That will give me negative 3 plus m. And then if I just switch the order of those, it becomes m minus 3. And then these two do in fact match up. So what that tells me is I can just multiply the fraction on the right. So this fraction, sorry I cut that off. I'm just going to multiply that by a negative 1 to make my denominators match. <clears throat> so a fraction on the left, I didn't change. Subtraction, subtraction sign stays the same. Now I have to multiply that negative 1 through, so it becomes a negative 5 on top. And then remember, I already figured out if I multiply this 3 minus m by negative 1, it's going to become my m minus 3. Okay, so then I have 1 minus negative 5 on top, all over m minus 3. 1 minus a negative 5, well that turns into 1 plus 5, so I get 6 over m minus 3. 6 is a single number, it doesn't cancel with anything in the bottom, that is my final answer. Okay, one more to go. So here we have a squared plus 4a over a squared plus 2a minus 8 plus 8 over a minus 2. So when I look at this, <clears throat> right now I'm just really focused on the denominators. So I'm asking myself if there's any similarities. Well, the one on the left, this guy is a trinomial, this guy is a binomial. But when I think about a trinomial, I know a trinomial can break into two binomials. So we're actually going to go kind of a step backwards here, and we're going to factor that one on the left, the a squared plus 2a minus 8, to see what its binomials are to see if we have any anything that matches. So right now let's just do that. So a squared plus 2a minus 8. So again, if you want to stop the video, it's great practice. Factor that using diamond in box, see what you get. When I did it, I got a plus 4 and a minus 2. Okay, well, look at that. So what I really know is now that the denominator, that denominator really does share a binomial with the denominator on the right. So if I'm looking at the a minus 2 here, that's just an a minus 2, which they both have. So really, the only thing I'm missing is that denominator on the right needs to have an a plus 4. But I can just take that a plus 4 and multiply the a plus 2 by that, or a minus 2, excuse me. So I'm going to multiply it by an a plus 4 to make them match. So my common denominator here is going to be a plus 4 and then a minus 2. So if I think back, what I just told myself is I need to multiply that a minus 2 over here by an a plus 4 to make it match, which means I need to do it on top. So let's just think about this for a second. So the left stays the same. So that's a squared plus 4a plus 8 times a plus 4. Now, remember I broke that trinomial up and it was a plus 4 and a minus 2, which I forced the fraction on the right to also match up with. I have to go through and distribute that 8 now. So I'm going to have a squared plus 4a plus 8a plus 32 all over a plus 4 and a minus 2. Let's combine like terms so that 4a and 8a can go together. So I have a squared plus 12a plus 32 all over a plus 4, a minus 2. And then you guessed it, we are going to factor this top part because it's a trinomial. I have two binomials in the bottom, so I want to see if I force that trinomial and it's two binomials, can I cancel something? So when I factored it, I got a plus 8 and then a plus 4 
all over a plus 4 and a minus 2. So this a plus 4 will cancel with this a plus 4, left with a plus 8 over a minus 2. Thanks for watching.